call on. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. So five, four, three, two, and one. All right, folks, welcome back to the podcast. I'm thrilled to have back Paula Scataloni. Paula, welcome back. Thank you, guys. Great to be here. It's good to see you again. It's been a while. I appreciate that. So Paula is a writer, educator, and thought leader in somatics, movement, and embodied consciousness. As a mentor, guide, and facilitator of experiential and transformative processes, Paula brings over 30 years of training in human behavior that she interweaves with her experience in the nervous system, therapeutic use of sound, movement, and bioenergetic principles to support individuals in aligning the psyche, soma, and the heart. She's worked in the field of embodiment since 1997. She co-founded and is an online faculty member of the Embodied Recovery Institute. She's also provided leadership at institutions such as Duke University. Her somatically oriented lens is featured in the book, Trauma-Informed Approaches to Eating Disorders. Paula, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. Great to be here. So, um... Before we get going here, remind our listeners uh, where you're from originally and where you are currently. Sure. Well, I grew up in Southern California and spent 13 years in Hawaii and then took a one-way flight to the East Coast and have been in Durham, North Carolina for a long time, since 2026. Wow. Wow. So, all right. So when we got in touch you had said there are some new things you were doing, but let's talk to us about that transition. What were you doing and what did you transition into? And then we'll talk Sure, about sure. Yeah, I love catching up because I think um, I'm one of those people that COVID uh, created an opportunity, right, for something different. And so at the time, uh, prior to COVID, I was a somatic experiencing practitioner, right? I was studying uh, sensory motor psychotherapy at the time. I was studying Kathy Kane's work using touch therapeutically for developmental trauma. And all of a sudden I could not touch people, right? Mm. I could not use a lot of my somatic skills. And so I did a, a quick pivot uh, to online work like most of us. And I had already been using acoustic therapy at that time for several years, but did not understand the potency of it at that time. I was doing it in person. So it wasn't until I moved online that I began to study it and the phenomenology of it more Mm. closely. And so COVID was a gift in that way. And it opened up the door to understanding how sound can be used therapeutically and uh, continue to utilize my SE skills and my other skills. But um, it just opened up a whole new world for me. And so I've been on a journey since then. That sounds really interesting. Um, Before we get into that, and I'm really excited to get into that because I don't think I've talked about that on this podcast. You have not, I looked. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But let me let me ask because it's really exciting to me to hear that you use COVID as an opportunity. Yes. Um how did that come about for you? How did those thoughts come about for you? And yeah. Yeah. Well um I think it became an opportunity and I, I did actually speak about it on a public broadcast of how do we do the things that we're trained to do, especially somatics online, right? So I was already having to think creatively about that, right? And how people, what, what props, what things can they use in their home to facilitate the same experiences as I was providing through touch. Mm-hmm. And so um, I ended up speaking about that because in somatics we can use props and somatic tools to um, give the body an experience that's similar to human contact such as that's that's what um weighted blankets weighted pillows warm rice packs on your kidneys right Mm -hmm. we can work with the body through different mechanisms and facilitate the same processes so i started to get very curious that way through the somatics but then the sound when i brought the sound in and coupled it with the somatics i was getting the same effects and even better Mm -hmm. so then i got very curious (laughs) so it was it was it sort of blossomed from there so what is, and I want you to, to kind of talk briefly about acoustics and acoustic therapy and treatment, but then I want to ask you how you got into that. Oh, okay. So um, 
so sound healing is a broad term, right? And when you think of sound healing, you think of singing bowls, right? Right, right. That's exactly. the thing. Everybody's going to sound <laughs> baths, right? Mm. Which has, you know, it has some therapeutic effects. Um, but I think then there's subsets, right? And so acoustics is a subset, right? And so people that study more of the um, the brain neuro neurology, and they study how acoustics, how theta waves work, how beta waves work, um, mm -hmm. how sound waves work, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of that was my doorway into acoustics and thinking about, you know, sound apps, right? And mm -hmm. frequencies and how do frequencies impact the brain, right? Mm -hmm. So I knew it from that angle. And but I had been introduced to it through Dr. Porges from his development of this tool, which stimulates the vagus nerve via acoustics. So my doorway into sound was that way. So mm -hmm. we can think of it from the brain science of sound healing, the theta waves and beta waves and meditation. We can think of it through Porges mechanism, which is going to be acoustics and frequencies because that's mm -hmm. what his program has designed. But then I also went and got trained in tuning forks, which is a whole nother subset of sound mm. healing, which works with um, resonance, right? And in, in trauma mm -hmm. therapy, we understand what resonance is and this idea of entrainment and how do we entrain the systems of our physiology into more coherent tones. What is so those are what does that mean? Entrainment. Yeah, these are this is the vocabulary of sound. Entrainment. <laughs> Is um you can look up Dan Siegel's work. He he uses um it a little differently, but this idea of you know when a child is upset and crying, the parent with their own processes, their own physiology that's co-regulated will entrain the child out of dysregulation into regulation via the parent's somatic resonance, right? So we're using entrainment in interpersonal neurobiology when we, st we think about co-regulation, right? I use it a little bit differently because I'm, I'm thinking about how this sound can entrain your system into a different, into a parasympathetic state, right? Out of sympathetic into parasympathetic. So it just mm -hmm. means bringing along mm -hmm. to create more harmony or coherence. Mm. The first thing that came to my mind when we when you started talking about sound healing and then acoustics was was music, of course. Yes, I mean, of course, music yes. can often be healing for a lot of us. But so, okay, so so, how do we want to talk about this? Because this is really interesting to me. Where where are we going to go from here? Where are we going to go from here? Um, well, for me, the most exciting piece is to to share about. Porges program and then the potential possibilities that can happen with it. Because I okay. do think we're on the verge of some of the next um, possibilities after somatics for trauma healing, right? We have psychedelics and this is sort of parallel to psychedelics right now. I think psychedelic assisted therapy where we're going to see kind of sound sneak up on the side. And so that's why I'm bringing it to folks' attention to start paying attention to this because it's mm -hmm. going to, you know, become more and more available and discussed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's back into that. What is what is Poor just doing? I mean, I think a lot of people associate the polyvagal theory, theory, theory with yes. him and so forth. Yes. So in mm, 2017, um, I was given his program by another SEP that he had developed. The initial studies and research were on kids with autism. So it was developed for children with autism to, uh, to help shift physiological state and attend to some of their symptomology, right? So he had a whole program and research, but the trauma therapist community got a hold of this program. It's called the Safe and Sound protocol, but I call it a program process, um, which essentially it uses music that has been set to specific frequencies that elicit safety in the nervous system. And it's fed through the auditory pathway, through acoustics. So you're listening to music 
and it's a vagal nerve stimulator. So it's going to innervate your vagal nerve, bringing the safety into the auditory pathway and entrain or begin to bring the nervous system out of defense into social engagement. Wow. So pretty fun and powerful and um, also not always a smooth ride, right? Because you can think about um, nervous system, especially those of us that are older, have built a lot of traction, of <laughs> constriction sure. and defense. Right. So, you know, it, you have to train people in how to use it and consider the nervous system that's sitting across from them. Uh, but there's lots of support happening from the company that uh, provides this program. But that's kind of the gist of it is, is, is using sound and acoustics and the frequency of safety mm -hmm. that you can th think about as um, it's the frequency that would be similar to a mother's lullaby. If we think about Hertz and what's been captured mm -hmm. in that, and that is fed to you over the course of five hours. So, <clears throat> so is this a particular type of music? I'm, I'm thinking like the meditation music or spa like music. Is, is exactly. That what it's more of a, we think of it as a algorithm that has been set to a uh, series, their playlists, and there's five hours worth of playlists. And trauma therapists will use this, will break it down into half an hour segments. Right. So you would listen to a half an hour of a playlist with me, and you'll be getting, I think of it as medication, this frequency of safety for half an hour, and then you'll have a week to integrate. And then you'll get the frequency of safety for half an hour. And then you have a week to integrate. Now, a lot happens in that half an hour. And this is where we get to the psychedelic piece of it, because as more safety comes into your system, your defenses soften and subconscious material starts to mm, rise to the mm. top. So this isn't just listening to music. Mm, no, this is, this is, as you said, very similar to psychedelic assisted therapy, where there is set setting so forth there's a guide there or a mentor there well that's how i'm using it so i okay. do have to put that caveat because okay. this is being used by occupational therapists it's being used by um maybe coaches i'm not sure but there's a range of people using for different reasons and they're they're all getting different results and equally good results mm -hmm. but i am using it in the same way as psychedelics. And that is excites me, right? Because then that's what we want to get out to the trauma therapist, mm -hmm. right? Because not everybody wants to use psychedelics, right? We, we want a range of options, right? Mm -hmm. They might want to have choices. Um, at some point, I think people might be asking to combine these, you know, that that's potentially, you know, what we're going to see down the line. Um, I think there's a brand new world that's opening. And so we just want to make sure that sound is, you know, part of that. Can you give us an example, perhaps of a case study you've worked with and what it looked like? Sure. Sure. So um, I have many. Uh, um, so uh, traditionally, let me go back to at the beginning. Um, I, my caseload was primarily working with um, 17, 18, 19 year olds that were stuck at home during COVID, miserable, right? Because they're supposed to be launching, right? So lots of anxiety, lots of trouble eating, lots of digestive troubles. And so we were going through this program and, and they were feeling better. They were feeling more regulated. They were able to eat. They were feeling more embodied. Their anxiety was going down. So I knew from that population um, that, you know, symptomatically, I, I was seeing pretty prevalent changes happening. And then mm -hmm. um, I have applied it with um, quite severe situation symptomatologies of, of uh, clients that have more developmental trauma where there's more fragmentation and seeing more cohesion occur mm -hmm. in the self 
and more resolution of split off parts. So I've gone that extreme. Mm -hmm. Now, more recently, my clients are therapists. So they're coming for a deep dive into their attachment system. They're coming to explore their platforms for their capacity to feel safe, feel seen, feel heard, express their emotions, uh, express who they are authentically in the world, right? And to reconnect to their inner wisdom, right? Their access to their intuition, their access to um, knowing their path in life and what's next, right? So that clarity that comes mm -hmm. from clear interoception. So there's a range of people that I'd use this with. So a current client um, seeped in somatic experiencing, NARM, you know, so really done their own work, but can't get to the core issue. The core issue happened in the womb. So the way I facilitate this, as I set it up, similar to um, a psychedelic process where we'll put pillows around, we'll get cozy, we'll put a blanket and we'll elicit. And I work with different ways of thinking, holding, experiencing to consider what the ideal space would be like for you to feel safe. And how would you like that structure, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How would you like that to be? And the sound comes in. So I'm, I'm coupling the sound with these somatic tools. And as the system softens, the material from the womb experience begins to emerge. Okay, let me pause you for a second. So are you yourself also listening to the music? I am not. Headphones? I am, they have headphones on. Okay. And I'm sitting across from them. Okay. And my role, similar to the guide, is to be as in my own present moment embodiment as much as possible. Almost like I'm, I'm sitting next to an infant in a crib watching them sleep. That's the level of presence, mm -hmm. right? And where my consciousness needs to be, okay? Be I think that helps to facilitate, right? A more expansive experience for the person right? Because my embodied presence, they can feel that somatically, mm -hmm. right? So they've got that, then they've got the sound, then they have the memory that starts to come up, right? Where they feel, I know I am not small, but I feel small right now, right? And we know how somatic therapy works, right? So the consciousness starts to go in that direction. My clients have some witness capacity, so they know where they are, and they know how to navigate it. And if they don't, they can open their eyes and find me. And then we can pause the music, which you can't do in psychedelic mm -hmm. assisted. Mm -hmm. Can't pause, right? Mm -hmm. But we can pause and we can regulate and we can elicit that present moment. I call it memory time dynamic mm -hmm. that you need to navigate in trauma therapy. So that that is a very interesting and i think key point is that you can pause so i'm coming to you i want to do this um now as i'm i'm listening to this is it music or is it sound it's music it's, it's vocal music, music pop it's music Oh. Or, or children's music or the latest I've been using is the classical playlist, just classical music, no vocals. Okay. So, and obviously I think it's important to, to point out here, there's the intention also, right? Yes. So I'm coming in here with a specific intention, it's not just to relax. No. Okay. No. Now, no, but, uh, now, when I'm doing this and I begin to do this and I start to feel something or experience something or remember something, am I uh, instructed to do what? Yes. Yeah. So before we start listening, I'm, I'm going to do some coaching. The primary premise is that what you experience are your memories, whether they're somatic, whether they're emotional, whether they're visual 
right? Because they're going to come through all those channels. Mm -hmm. So if your heart starts racing, I say, okay, well, that's a memory, right? Or, or you're in the sympathetic pattern, right? If that's what it's listening. So mm -hmm. can you feel that as such, right? And can you feel me here with you? Because we know that trauma is not about always what happened. It's about not having the safe other to be with you while mm -hmm. you feel what happened. Mm -hmm. Right. So as long as they can feel me there with them and know I'm there and be with their internal experience and be curious about it, it will continue. It will process. We don't have to always intervene. We can just let it go. Right. Wow. Wow. Um, so are you, Will are you instructing or coaching your clients to uh, open their eyes when they feel something, or what are you what are you coaching them to do? When it's up to the client. It depends on their capacity, right? So somatic again, my clients right now are therapists, like yourself, right? So they may have the capacity and and actually enjoy studying themselves. So they they're not going to want to always open their eyes because they're they're fascinated with the process, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if it was someone who wasn't my client and they experienced sensations that they were like, hmm, what is this? Something feels odd. They could open my eyes and we could make contact so they could feel my presence. And then I might put up a, and say, okay, we'll put your thumb up if everything's okay and put it to the side if you're kind of concerned. So we have some way of communicating. Mm -hmm. I also titrate, but we'll listen for 10 minutes then mm -hmm. check in, listen for 10 minutes and then check in. Mm -hmm. So there is never any, um, what I feel is over medicating <laughs> during mm -hmm. it. So there's lots of titration built in. And, and some therapists titrate even more than I do. They'll listen to two minutes of the song, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so for me, it is a in-depth study of the physiological structures of your attachment and bonding system, right? as it's being brought out of defense and strategies and you're coming back into more secure attachment mm -hmm. is what and, we said. So, and why are you studying that specifically? Why? Because the, the program is influencing the social engagement system, which for me is the neurological structures of the attachment system. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's influencing how your social engagement system neurosets safety. So it's influencing, am I safe enough? Do I feel safe enough in the world? Do I feel safe enough expressing my feelings? Do I feel safe enough being me? Do I feel safe enough? I mean, who of us has all that, right? <laughs> On board. <laughs> right. 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 Oh my gosh, this is so intense. It is. Paula, um, wow. So this is so interesting that I've been doing this podcast for so long and this is the first time, really, uh, that I've, I've, I've talked about this on here. So do people come to, and I think really, again, the, the, the fact that this is somewhat reminiscent of psychedelic assisted therapy, yet to me, it feels like there's a lower barrier to entry, right? I mean, yes. you you can pause, you can, yes. obviously yes. people are doing low doses of psychedelic assisted therapy and, and larger doses, of course, but how does this differ aside from those uh, characteristics? Yeah. I mean, I'm toying as well as thinking of it more in line with holotropic breath work, perhaps. Right. Um, so I think that um, it's, it's for me, what I'm witnessing is it does allow the neural pathway that, that allows us to, to find safe connection, be it with others, be it with the universe, be it with ourselves. Right. So that's very similar, right, to, to uh, psychedelic assisted therapy. Um, it, it can elicit uh, uncomfortable memories in a similar way, but we can, um, we can titrate it, 
we can, um, how else is it different? I don't have, I don't have a lot of, uh, training in the psychedelics to refer to mm -hmm. that, um, beyond the titration piece. I mean, I can't speak to, you know, exactly what's happening in the brain, right. Mm -hmm. Um, to compare them, but I think that if we're talking about states of consciousness and shifting states of consciousness and expanding consciousness, they're both doing that or allowing that process to occur. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, it could be safe to say that this is also, you know, eliciting our capacity for, you know, access to oxytocin and, you know, some of those mm -hmm. chemicals that are, it's our bonding hormones, right? Right, right. I know one bonding. thing with psychedelics is that there are different types that people use to elicit different states of consciousness. For example, yes. MDMA, psilocybin, yes. ketamine, yes. et cetera. Yes. With acoustic therapy, are there different uh, tools or elements that you would use to treat specific symptoms or? No, I think, well, I think of it as, um, if we just come down, down to nervous system health, mm -hmm. right? The health of the nervous system. And when we have a healthy nervous system, we have resiliency, we have capacity for resiliency, we have capacity for, for restoration, we have capacity for self-regulation, we have capacity for co-regulation, we have capacity for um, clearer interoception and cues about what we want and what we need. And um, so I don't think it's this symptom or that symptom. I think it's more of, it could be more thought of like, dosage if we take mm -hmm. the same medicine and we think about a particular system might need a different dose of that medicine in a different way but it's all going to feed into mm -hmm. a healthy resilient nervous system right which is going to have health effects in all different areas sure now are you you mentioned that you're working with with therapists are you how does your uh, protocol work? For example, are you working uh, in several sessions or mm -hmm. in the course of what does it look like? So I've moved to doing most of my work in groups. And part of that is to facilitate a shared experience of our humanness. Mm. Right. And to start to, to connect people to each other through, um, yeah, through, you know, we, we, nobody is without trauma at some level, right? right or stress right. response at some level. So to level the playing field, we do it in groups. Um, we meet for 12 weeks. And so we have a three month experience together. Wow. And that's hour and a half, two hours. Is and it there's online? Just, it's online. So I have wow. people all over, all over the world. Wow. Right. So I can have people in Dubai. I can have people in Europe meeting people mm -hmm. who they never would have met. Right. And then sharing their similar experiences of being human. Mm -hmm. Right. Of their mm -hmm. attachment dynamics, of their ways of holding back who they are, of their realizations of what's important to them. Many people, after they do my group, they go change their lives. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm not happy here. That needs to change. Or, or maybe it happens during the three months. But by the end, you know, there, there's a lot of clarity about who they are. This and sounds incredible. Um, as soon as you said the group process, I thought to myself, wow, that sounds intense. But at the same time, like you said, you're, you're with other people who are in this process, not unlike a normal group experience, but um, sharing the, the, it sounds very intimate. 
also, yes. you yes. know. Yes, um, very intermittent. A lot of the time the groups want to continue to meet even after. And so some of them I've continued. So is this once a week and for how long? It's a three month group once a week for about an hour and a half or two hours, uh, depending on the size of the group. Uh, th they were about four people per group and now they're going to be about six. So it'll be about two hours, but they're intimate. They're small groups. So you really get to know the people in the group. And right. there's, a, um, there's a strong container of safety that's developed just from the beginning. And I, and I work on it in each group. So there's a, mm -hmm. a sense of th this is a place I can come and be myself and kind of unload um, the truth. Right. I'm loading so the it, truth. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. As we kind of wind down here, who is this group for? So my groups are primarily for therapists or those in the, who have been in embodiment practices. So there's some level of understanding about the nervous system, some ability to have witness consciousness, um, because that, if they don't have that, then they, they kind of need a pre-class on somatic tracking and witness consciousness. And so so my groups tend to have folks who are, have done some yoga or done some breath work or done some somatic therapy already, right? So they're, they're kind of along. They've define, come along. And define witness consciousness for those who might. Who be. don't. Um, another word for it is dual, dual um, perception where we can hold our awareness of our internal state and the outer environment at the same time. So guy, I can still feel you here and I can notice my heart beating fast mm -hmm. right and i can do that at the same time or i can see or sense a memory of my childhood and i know i'm sitting in this chair right because if i can't do that then i do need some coaching and skills on how to do that mm -hmm. first because this is gonna can certainly whip up some memories mm -hmm. right so so we want to know that people have that capacity now just quickly um this is whipping up memories because it's in that, that specific frequency. It's whipping uh, up. Yeah. Because, well, because we're feeling safe and when right. we feel safe, um, if I think about it from internal family systems, it's gently dismantling the protectors to al allow the exiles to come forward. Mm. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Paula, what's, um, the best way to get in contact with you. And then when's your next uh, group happening? Give us some info on that. Great. Uh, so contacting me through my website, which is www.paulascataloni.com. It's probably the easiest. I do also have a Paula Scataloni LLC Facebook following. And my groups start uh, the end of July, beginning of August. I usually have a few cohorts going at the same time. So folks can pop on. There is an application okay. that has to be filled out. Okay. So exciting. I have to have you back. <gasps> Wonderful. I would love we to come back. Yeah, you got to come back. There's not enough time to, to talk about all this. Um, so exciting. Um, and and yet intense. You know, it I is. mean, this is, I love the way you framed everything by saying this is kind of a human you know, a shared human experience. And I think that's really so important to put out there. Uh, so I really appreciate that. Yeah. 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 It's great, great seeing you again. Great having you on here. Wonderful. It was lovely to see you as well. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.